Hi there. My name's Colin McMichael, and I'm the Education Coordinator here at Tree Folks. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about junipers. Here in Austin, we usually call them cedars, but they're really in the genus Juniperus, which means that they're actually a juniper. Cedars are a very different kind of tree. True cedars belong in the genus Cedrus and are not native to North America. These trees can occasionally be found planted in the landscape, but they are not terribly common in this part of the world. The most commonly encountered cedar in central Texas is the Deodar cedar, which hails from the Himalayas. True cedars all have needle-like foliage and tend to grow in a stereotypical manner for a conifer, with thick-ridged or square-cracked bark and broad, level branches. The wood of true cedars has a distinctive spicy, resinous odor, a trait shared with the junipers that has led to the conflation of their common names. To the east of I-35, the dominant species of quote-unquote cedar tree in Austin is the eastern red cedar, which isn't the best common name for the tree since it's actually a juniper. An alternate acceptable name is the Virginia juniper, as its Latin name is Juniperus virginiana. Like all junipers, eastern red cedars have scale-like foliage that is held flush against the twigs. Eastern red cedars are easy to tell apart from their more westerly sister species, the ash juniper, by their silvery bark, perpendicular branch angles, and smoother foliage. Ash junipers, the trees most central Texans are referring to when they say cedar, have red-brown bark, acute branch angles, and prickly foliage that acts as an herbivore deterrent. Females of both species have blue berry-like cones that grace their branches in the winter months and are relished by birds. As these two species are very closely related, they are able to hybridize, which may make identification difficult, especially around the I-35 corridor where they overlap. This is an ash juniper. This is the most common tree in Austin. It's also extremely prevalent across the Edwards Plateau. They historically were restricted to the northern slopes of hills due to uh, forest fires, but now you can pretty much find them all over because if you introduce cows to a system, they become invasive. Cows like to eat everything except for this tree, it turns out. Uh, they don't like to eat it because it's bitter and it has really prickly foliage. That's one of the main differences between this tree and an eastern red cedar. This foliage, you can feel it, it, feel, it kind of stabs your fingers a little bit. But the bark is also a lot redder on this tree than you see on an eastern red cedar where it's very silver. Uh, the ash juniper also has acute branch angles when they come out from the trunk, as opposed to the eastern red cedar that holds its branch out perpendicular. So this ash juniper is growing in a very stereotypical fashion for one of these trees. You can see it actually has eight distinct trunks coming out of the ground. They often separate like this, making kind of vase shape, but it ends up being a large dome-shaped tree that has an evergreen canopy. Occasionally these trees will grow in a single trunk form. These are a little bit more confusing because they will trip you up between the eastern red cedar and an ash juniper. It's easy to tell them apart though. The ash juniper has this really, really dark red bark where the eastern red cedar is going to have silver bark. Also look at these branch angles. This angle right here is a cute angle. There's another cute angle right here. An eastern red cedar isn't going to do that. It's going to hold its branches straight out like this. Junipers in Texas have a strange history. Although native, they are almost uniformly hated amongst Texans. They are viewed as a water-stealing tree that invades and degrades the landscape. But in reality, they are less of a groundwater stealer and more of a rain catcher that can prevent dangerous floods from rampaging down our waterways by preventing runoff. Floods like the tragic Memorial Day flood on the Blanca. Junipers are also seen as a nuisance or pest tree due to their allergenic properties. What does this high count of cedar mean? For allergy sufferers, KVU's Tina Shively along 360 in Northwest Austin, where you can find a lot of cedar trees. Tina? Absolutely, Albert. And 90% of all allergy sufferers here in Austin are allergic to cedar. And I'm going to give you an up close look at why. It's all to blame on these little brown cones you see on these trees. All male trees have these little cones. You can see them all along the branches here. The cones will explode, and then the tree will look like it's on fire. So much white pollen gets released into the air, it resembles smoke. As Albert mentioned, the weather conditions have to be just right like they are today. Cool, dry air behind a cold front. It sets off pollination from Waco to San Antonio all up and down the I-35 corridor. Now, sufferers will get itchy, watery eyes, running noses, coughing and congestion all over lethargy. But there is good news. Allergists say there are some medications that can help. And the medications do help. But even to a tree lover like me, a juniper can be a bit of a hassle. 
There are some animals that depend on them, however. Our endangered golden-cheeked warbler relies on these trees for nesting material, as they exclusively use the stringy, dehiscent bark found on only older junipers. Unfortunately, it takes junipers upwards of 20 years before they develop this bark, which is one of the reasons why we have so many junipers and so few warblers. The mature juniper stands that have been lost to the overly enthusiastic clear cutters and our immature cedar breaks do not offer the same benefits. Mature cedars also have benefits to people as their dense, rot-resistant heartwood is prized for fence posts and other outdoor applications. Besides other species of juniper, there are only a few commonly planted trees that might confuse you in your identification efforts. Here's one native look-alike that you might confuse with both of our native junipers. So this is not a juniper, but it does have similar foliage where it's held against the branch like that. It is scale-like foliage. You can see right here, clasping the twigs very closely, much like the juniper foliage. This, however, is a Arizona cypress. So Arizona cypress are from far west Texas. Uh, they do really well in the hill country because they're very drought tolerant. But you can tell that this, the branch structure on here is much more open than the junipers, which is a great way to tell these apart. They also have slightly different habits where the Arizona uh, cypresses tend to have a single trunk and they tend to grow more or less like a Christmas tree. 